Sponsored by Sprite. It's the 2K Sports pregame show. Hello again, everybody. I'm Ernie Johnson along with Shaquille O'Neal on 2K Sports, and the NBA season is about to begin. Tonight, we'll be watching the Indiana Pacers playing against the Chicago Bulls in their house, United Center. And for the Bulls, they come into the opening game of this season with the goal of getting that first win out of the way as soon as possible. How they'd love to be sitting at 1-0 by the end of this evening. All right, big fella, I want some straight talk on the Indiana Pacers. And this is not based on numbers or stats or any of that stuff. It's just when you watch them play. Are they the best defensive team in the NBA? I would have to say yes, and Ernie, numbers don't lie. They are the best on paper. They do everything well on the defensive end. However, there's still two problems I see with the Pacers. One, they can still falter in crunch time. And two, they do not have a lockdown perimeter guy. That about wraps it up for now. Thank you for joining us, and we will see you next time. Welcome everyone to a brand new season of NBA basketball. I'm sure you're as excited as all of us are here at 2K Sports. This is Kevin Harlan with my partners, Clark Kellogg and Steve Kerr, Doris Burke on the sideline, and as we get ready to start the season in stock, we've got an Eastern Conference battle ready to get rolling, and the Chicago crowd wants some love from their Bulls. All fueled up and ready to go. Let's check out who's on the floor, courtesy of Gatorade. On the court for Indiana. Down low, Weston Hibbert. Rodney Stuckey out there with George Hill. And it's George in at the small forward. David West, kind of an old school mold for big men guys. He's tough. Clark, you saw this. Incredibly physical. Uh, Steve with a great IQ for the game. Yeah, kind of like the uh, Davis brothers of those 90 day, uh, Pacers teams. Dale and Antonio. No, just physically dominant. He would fit right in with those guys. And Wes, like the rest of the Pacers, is committed to the defensive end of the floor. As a matter of fact, he's much like a linebacker in football, calling signals, communicating the guys out in front of him, making sure guys are in the right spot. He guards his position and has really brought an element of toughness and professionalism to the Pacers that's rubbed off on the entire team. Now here's Rhodes. He dishes it to Dunlap. Rose against Hill. Rose passes to Noah. Just five on the clock. And he was fouled on the way up. Two free throws now for him. And West uses his strength well inside. Boxes out every time. Uses that 7-4 wingspan. He plays a, a lot bigger than people realize. Derek Rose. Derek Rose, born and raised on the south side of Chicago, now playing for his hometown board. He even became a partner and endorser for Chicago's top deep dish pizza chain. He does represent this town. You talk about Derrick Rose's culinary interest. He's looked to change his diet for the better. Yeah, he, he needed to, Kevin, because, uh, you know, he was a big fan of candy when he came into the league. It was kind of his vice. He said he would eat up to two pounds of candy in one sitting. I mean, 
that's just crazy. But he's hired a personal chef. He's eating better. He's taking care of his body. And uh, it's important, obviously, as you get older and, and you're dealing with injuries. Now, here is Hill after the miss from Paul Gasol. It's back to Hill. Here's West. And that one hits back iron. Boy, we don't see that too often. No defender on him, and he just clanks the open jumper. Outside Butler puts it up. And he connects with the jumper. Butler's got his first bucket of the night. And so just over a minute and a half played. Hill against Rose. Hill dishes to George. Stuckey outside. And George kicks to Stuckey. Down to five on the shot clock. From downtown. And Paul George, good for the three. How in the world did they let him get that wide open? The Bulls have gone one of three from the field to start this one so far. Rose kicks to Dunleavy. Pass to Gasol. Into Noah. He's on Team Noah, one of the great effort players in the NBA. His energy and mobility enable him to... Make his impact felt all over the court. Boy, you talk about Noah's energy and hustle. His offensive rebounding is a huge plus for their offense, and his speed in transition creates problems for the opposing big men as well. Mahini's jumped in for Roy Hibbert. At the defensive end, Steve, Noah is a key player. Yeah, last season's defensive player of the year, Kevin. He gives you rebounds, blocks, steals, but what impresses me the most is his ability to guard on the perimeter against screen and roll when he switches out onto point guards. He's unmatched in that category. It's really tough to get that shot off with the size differential there. It's not an individual matchup he's going to win every time, especially in the post. Very well done. I didn't think he had any business operating down there with the big fellas. Well, there was a time not that long ago when Rodney Stuckey was considered a rising star in the NBA. Considered a steal with the 15th pick in the 2007 draft. But after back-to-back -back disappointing seasons, I think it's fair to ask if we've seen the best of Stuckey. In the world. I don't think they come much easier than that look. And in this first quarter, about three minutes played. Hill kicks to Stuckey. West setting the pick for Stuckey. West outside. Rodney Stuckey on the wing. Six to shoot. West setting the pick for George. And there's the call. It's going to be an illegal screen. And Rodney Stuckey was playing in a contract season. Um, started last season breaking his thumb in his car door. And that, that required surgery. He missed the first month. And as a result, he never did get back to the level he had hoped for. Now here's Rhodes. Inside to Gasol. Yes, and it's Rose with the assist that time. It was almost like he was surprised to be that wide open, yet he knocked it down. Pacers have gone three of four from the field to start out the game. And for Stuckey, not an outside shooter, but his percentage of shots around the basket has dropped for three consecutive seasons. Yeah, he's not drawing as many fouls. He assisted at half the rate he did in 2010-11. Some of it was fit in Detroit. No floor spacing. See if he can get back to playing his brand of basketball. Pass to Dunley. Back to Rose. Some nice ball movement by the Bulls. Here's Gasol. And he finishes nicely on the way. Gasol's got six. There's 154 left to play here in the first. Well, Doris, an interesting game. Moments ago, you had a chance to talk with head coach Frank Vogel. What do you have to say? One player he said he's worried about in this game is Pau Gasol. He said with his length and touch, it's really hard to bother that shot. We're going to try to be physical with him, body him up early, and deny him position. And guys, that's what a lot of teams try with Gasol. Force him to really battle through contact. We'll see how it works. Thanks, Doris. The Pacers making a change here. Luis Scola, he's checked in for West. Chris Copeland comes in for George. C.J. Miles, he's checked in for Rodney Stuckey. And it's Watson in for George Hill. Now here's Butler. Rose attacking. Floats one. Shot's good. Oh, boy. I 
love watching this guy play. He just lives and breathes the game. Loves to be out on the floor with his guys. One twenty-five left in the first quarter of the game. Well, to say that the Pacers did well in the East last season would be putting it mildly. They were the cream of the crop for most of the season. Hope on the pass to Watson. Shot clock at six. Here's Miles. It's on target from the high post. Miles has got his first two points of the night. The Bulls leading by four. And there was a brief moment late in the season last year, Clark, where the Pacers slipped from the top spot, but they were able to get it back. Yeah, they did, Kevin. Uh, they fought back, grabbed the number one seed in the East, and they did earn it. I mean, 38 conference wins is a pretty impressive number. Here is Miles. To the left wing. Here is Watson. He's covered by Rhodes. Copeland dishes to Watson. Off target with his three. Good solid defense on the perimeter there. Challenging the shot and not fouling. Even the best shooters can be bothered by his defense. The kick out to Rose. Just one second between the shot clock and game clock. Well, probably the right play defensively. If you can't get the block, send them to the free throw line. Don't give them an easy two. No easy buckets inside. Force free throws and work to keep them out of the lane next time around. Bulls shooting their fifth and six free throws of the game. And not a very strong free throw shooting team in general. Guys, they shot 73% as a team a year ago. And, you know, whenever they get into a stretch where it looked like maybe they would turn it around at the line, they would immediately take a step back. They've really built this lead, Kevin, at the free throw line. Watson kicks to Copeland. And here's Watson. And so the first quarter wraps up without too much action on the scoreboard. It's the Bulls ending the first quarter on a 12-4 run. And back in a moment as we'll get underway with quarter number two. season. Stephen Curry and the Golden State Warriors take on Chris Paul and the Los Angeles Clippers. It's the NBA Tuesday night. Now the second quarter getting ready to start up. Looking at what we've seen for the Bulls, what do you guys think? Solid first quarter for this club. They came out strong and they put together some nice momentum here. Steve, I like the looks they've gotten on offense. A lot of good. Pacers trail by six. And small forward and power forward. It's McDermott and Gibson. Heinrich is out there with Tony Snell. And it's Miritich in at the five spot. That's the Bulls five as we get into the second quarter. Watson the pass to George. Six on the shot clock. Hibbert with a screen for George. The rebound by Gibson. Well, Paul George, PG-24, has solidified himself as a quality shooter from long range, but I love the way he looks to attack the basket. Needs to do that more often and more efficiently. He uses his length and athleticism to get to the basket and to the free throw line. Here's George following the basket by Doug McDermott. Here is Watson, guarded by Heinrich. Now Watson, still getting warmed up offensively. No buckets yet in the game for him. That's good. Boy, he crashed the boards with purpose right there. Well-deserved second-chance points for him. The Bulls leading by six. Heinrich dishes to Snell. Back to Heinrich. At the top of the key, McDermott. Here's Miritich. The shot will not go. So Indiana will take it the other way. 
here's George. Rebound collected by Schnell. You know, typically, guys, he has the body control to finish when he's in that tight. I'm not sure what happened there. Heinrich kicks to Snell. The feed to Miritic. In shot on the way. Snell, that's good. Snell's got the lead up to eight now for the Bulls. Nice pass. That one was right on target. For Indiana, they've gotten only one of their first four shots in the second quarter to drop. Here is Watson. Scola, a screen on Heinrich. Watson kicks to Scola. Watson with it. He's picked up by Heinrich. Nobody near George. The long distance three is buried. George has got six. Talk about a terrific stroke. I mean, the defense was hoping that a three ball that deep was not going in. Well, they know he's a great shooter, so they still have to get out there and challenge despite the fact that he's he's so deep with that shooting range. Okay, well, let's check in with Doris Burke reporting from our sideline in this game. Doris, take it away. Thank you, Kevin. Roy Hibbert has now mastered what he calls, quote, the straight up. He once saw Dwight Howard in the finals jump and absorb contact without fouling, and Hibbert thought to himself, I've got to learn how to do that. In drills, his coach, Frank Vogel, made him defend two players at once without fouling. At first, he wanted to give up, but guys, that is how he perfected it. He sure has. Coach Vogel making sure the refs honor it. Doris, thanks. The Chicago Bulls consistently one of the best defensive teams in basketball. Coach Tom Thibodeau is an innovator on that side of the floor and a great motivator as well. He's done an amazing job. Now here's Hibbert. He's had some playing time, but no scoring yet from him. The easiest way to do it sometimes is with the bounce pass. And the first time out of the game called for Chicago. Bull center Joe Keen Noah winning defensive player of the year last season. And well deserved. A big factor for him inside. And you know, Kevin, you can make a case with the talent they have arguably being the premier defensive front line in the NBA. Agreed. Some changes for Chicago. How Gasol's checked in for Miritich. Butler comes in for McDermott. And Derek Rose is subbed in for Tony Snell. The Pacers also changing it up. West is checked in for Skull. Stuckey comes in for C.J. Miles. And George Hills subbed in for C.J. Watson. Rose passes to Heinrich. Back to Rose. And a great assist by Heinrich as that one goes in. Eight points for Rose. Very well done. He is a confident, dynamic scorer. A moment to check in with Doris Burke. Doris? Kevin, I was able to hear the advice Frank Vogel gave to his team during that last break. He preached patient offense and encouraged his guys to use the shot clock. He wants his guys to be deliberate. So, Kevin, change is already being made on the fly here in the second quarter. Always great to hear from you, Doris. No good from Gibson. He operates pretty well in traffic, guys, but that was a tough play to finish off. They now take the lead. Hill's got four this quarter. It seems that every pass they make is leading to a score here. I mean, that's just exquisite ball movement. Yeah, they're making the right play. They're working together, and they're just looking for the best shot they can every possession. And denied at the rim, but they call the foul. Whistle blows, and we'll see him shoot two from the line. Well, what was supposed to be the triumphant return for Derrick Rose a year ago quickly turned into another nightmare season. Finally returning from that torn ACL in the 2012 playoffs, he managed only 10 games before tearing the meniscus in his other knee. Just devastating. We obviously hope that Rose can come back and put in a full season. The Bulls making a switch here. Noah's checked in. Mahimi's checked in for Indiana. Chris Copeland comes in for George. Wants to screen on Heinrich. And there's the call. It's going to be an illegal screen. And now a chance to look at David West here. Solid numbers last season. They averaged about 14 points a game, six rebounds, and two assists. I'm sure he's happy with the way things have been going. Those are some nice, steady numbers. Well, how could he be unhappy about them, Steve? I mean, he'd probably like to see just a little more of an uptick in them. Just the same, but nothing to not be content about there. Well, you take a look at Rose, who was extremely patient in trying to get back to being on the court, and then he fell victim to another and devastating knee injury. A terrific blow for him personally and certainly for the team and the city. But fortunately, the surgery did manage to 
keep all of his meniscus, which provides a better prognosis as we move forward. And here is Hill following Kirk Heinrich's three. Rejected by Gasol. You know, something that's kept this game close is the fact that the rebound totals are almost identical. No separation there. Not yet, anyway. He feeds it to Rose. Gasol trying to free himself up. And there's Derrick Rose on the assist by Gasol. You know, the only tough part of that basket for him was getting into such good position. The rest of it seemed easy. Hill dishes to West. Passes it to Copeland. To the inside, Mahimi. And lots of contact there. Missing the shot. He'll shoot two. That's on Joe King Noah. Easy call there. No question about that one. You can hear the impact from where I am. The Pacers shooting their fourth and fifth attempts at the free throw line tonight. So he gets them both. Here's Rose. He's got 12. Noah with a screen for Rose. Shot off the screen, and that's not going to go. And we're through two here in a good one. Bulls lead by four. And now let's catch up with Doris Burke, who's standing by on the sideline. Doris? Well, Pow, tell us what have been the key aspects to how this team is playing so far through the first two quarters. Well, I just had to be aggressive from the beginning. Take this house over there. We move the ball with being in the face. We were defending better in the first quarter, and we were able to knock down the shots. Pal, thank you for the time. Gentlemen, over to you. Thank you so much, Doris. Great interview as always. Don't go anywhere, folks. We'll be back for the second half of basketball shortly. Signs looking to pull away in the last half of the game. Excellent game we've seen from Derrick Rose. He has 12 points and he's produced six points from the free throw line. That's nice work. Now he's helping their cause, finding some easy points through you know, penetration and attacking the defense. Pacers trail by four. You know that old saying: the more things change, the more things stay the same. That applies to Chicago. Once again, they were incredibly tough at home with their defense. Checking out the group of Frank Vogel to start the second half. George and Stroh, there are the forwards. Adney Stuckey out there with George Hill. And it's Hibbert in at the five, roaming the paint. And that tough defense by the Bulls here in Chicago, Steve, helped them to 27 wins in the United Center. Well, a, a tough defense can stifle a lot of teams, and the Bulls have that for sure. That's been the strength of their club for a long time. And when you add that to this kind of home court advantage, Pretty tough combination to beat. And Indiana making a change here. West is checked in. Now here's Butler. The 11-footer. And he gets that one to go off the front iron. Eight points for Pau Gasol. That is some real serious dime dropping there. Exquisite assist. Hill kicks to George. West is screen on Butler. George with the ball. Butler covering. Here's West. Chicago grabs the miss. Rose passes to Butler. Feeds it to Noah. And he takes it in for the layup off a very nice feed. And it's a six-point Bulls lead. That's their third straight make off an assist. Boy, the ball movement's been fantastic here the last few possessions. Hibbert with a screen for Stucky. And George, here we go. Rodney Stuckey on the wing. Pocket six. Let's it go from 14. Goes up again. And it's West missing. And offensively, they have yet to hit a shot. Slow start here to the second half. 
It's Chicago with another bucket. They've been good on all three of their shots since coming out of the locker room at the break. So the Pacers call timeout their first of the game. And going against Chicago, their first game of the NBA's regular season. Well, we saw how competitive and entertaining the season series was between these two teams last year. That was fun to watch. Now here is Hill. He's got six. Now the dish to George. Got a piece of it. Stolen by Rose. Here's Butler. Rest with the block. This offense is first miss after three straight makes to start the second half. And George, here we go. Wasted no time on that one. George has got 10 points in the game. Whatever their plan was defensively that time, it, it didn't work. Not if it results in that shot. You know, the league doesn't always update players' heights after they enter the league. Paul George, 6'10", after a late post spurt following his rookie season in the NBA. Now here's Rose. 12 points for him. The kick outside to Butler. Paul George grabs the miss. That's one he knows he should have made. Here's Stuckey. And another shot. And he sinks the layup. And now just a four-point Bulls lead. Really aggressive play, taking it to the rim against the big man. Tell you what, I love that fearless attitude. And Paul George with great athleticism and fluidity at his side. Yeah, he makes it really look easy. He's a very gifted athlete. Extremely quick. And not only a foot, but his hands are quick, too. He's not just a scorer or a defender. I mean, he's got a chance to be one of the best do-it-all players in the league as he continues to grow as a passer and ball handler. And rebounding, he's one of the best at his position right now in the league. And keeping us updated from the sideline, let's swing it over to Doris Burke for an update. Hi, Doris. Well, gentlemen, the Pacers head coach, Frank Vogel, has helped turn this team into a powerhouse. He's had a reputation for positivity, lifting his players up and boosting their confidence. As Paul George put it, coach has no shame in calling you out. If you don't know what you're doing, you're going to get embarrassed. No one wants that, Kevin. No calling out, Doris, that's for sure. Thanks. That's good. 14 points for Derrick Rose. And that's a difficult shot in the face of a defender that towers over. Uh, you know, he almost seems to enjoy those mismatches, Steve. It gives him a chance to show what a strong finisher he is. Now here's West. And so he earns a trip to the line. Officials saw the contact and he'll shoot two. David West is a tough man's man in power forward. Who also possesses a lot of guard skills. I mean, for a player his size, he's one of the best passers in the game. He can put it on the floor, and that jump shot of his from out to about 17, 18 feet is money. He's a laser from that distance and can occasionally splash that three-pointer on the two. Pacers trail by three. Miles dishes to Mahimi. He kicks to Watson. From 13, that's good. <laughs> 127 left in the third quarter of the game. And it's Rose penetrating. Can't get it to fall. Some rugged defense there against one of the stronger. Miles. Oh, that's blocked. And that'll be Indiana as it goes out of bounds. Pacers retain possession. And some changes here for the Pacers. Scola comes in for West. And Chris Copeland subbed in for George. Chris Copeland. So here's Scola. There's the pass to Miles. Here's Copeland. Defended by Butler. Shot clock at six. Here's Watson. And no good. Had a chance to take the lead. Now here's Rose, the fast break opportunity. Heinrich outside, uncovered. And again, Chicago, no good. We'll see if they want to trade two for one here. But you got to time up the clock. It's easier said than done, but you got to execute your offense on that first possession. Here is Miles. Smokes one up. Copeland can't hit. It's a four-second differential between the shot clock and game clock. Now here's Rose. He's got 14. Noah with a screen for Rose. Kicks to Heinrich. Three-pointer. 
Shot is off. Here's Copeland. No good. And we just finished the third quarter, and we've got a tight ball game here. It's Chicago up by one. And we'll have the start of the fourth quarter for you as soon as we get back from this short break. Sunday, October 12th, Chris Paul and the Los Angeles Clippers take on LaMarcus Aldridge and the Portland Trailblazers. Do not miss it. State Farm assist to the game, and Steve coming earlier on a three-pointer. Yeah, we've seen a lot of good passes tonight, some on the interior. This one on the outside, setting up his teammate perfectly for that three-point look. Gibson is the four with Gasol in the middle. Heinrich is out there with Tony Snell, and it's McDermott in at the three spot. That's the five out there for the Bulls. And he gets it to go. Textbook right there. Nice pass, great catch, beautiful finish. Pacers trail by three. Stuckey outside. Hibbert with the screen. And the wide open shot from Stuckey. And a kind roll that time off the rim as that one falls. Heinrich with it. Dishes it to Snell. Pass to Gibson. Good on the baseline, James. Gibson's got four points this quarter. That's how to orchestrate for your teammate. Terrific pass. And for the Pacers, they're shooting a respectable 47% from the field in this one. Outside Hill. Skola, a screen on Heinrich. Go up, no up. Yeah, no excuses there. Got a really good look at the basket after being freed up by the pick. We say it all the time. The execution was excellent. The result not as good. But good ball movement anyway. I'm Doug McDermott, senior out of Creighton, one of the all-time great scorers in college basketball history. In fact, 3,150 points. That ranks him fifth all-time in Division I. And he's not just a great shooter. He's a scorer who can create his own shot in a number of ways. Catching up on the changes now for Indiana. West comes in for Luis Scola. And Paul George is subbed in for Chris Copeland. Let's find out what Doris Burke has for us. Hey, Kevin, during that last break, I heard Frank Vogel addressing his team. He let his players know that they've got to do a better job on defense. He said, they're scoring any way they want. We've got to show some pride here. Let's make a stand defensively, get a stops, and get on a run of our own. Do they have it in them, Kevin? And McDermott, the first player in 30 years, Clark, to make the APL America first team three consecutive times. It's only been done ten times before. Well, he was absolutely fantastic as a college player. One of the best college careers in the history of college hoops, Kevin. No doubt about that. There were some questions about how his game was translated to the NBA. Not a question mark for me. This is a guy who I think, while he might not be a superstar, he's going to be more than a serviceable long-term pro. And so it's Indiana with it. Following the three-point basket by Chicago. Hill has the open look. Trying to answer back. But that three is off the mark. Chicago leading by six. Heinrich kicks to Gibson. Pass to Gasol. Good, and Heinrich gets the assist. Heinrich's got his fourth assist in this one. And what jumps out at you guys, the assist holes. I mean, they have been dominant in that category. It's the ball movement, the player movement, the great rhythm to their offense. Clearly seems to me a different mindset between these teams. Now, here is George. Shot clock at five. Here's Hibbert, and he gets the bucket. I think they need to get much more disruptive defensively. They can't just keep allowing these easy baskets. 
I agree. They need more energy in the post, maybe some double teaming. They've got to get their defense in gear. Here's Heinrich. Roy Hibbert picking up that last pass. Heinrich passes to McDermott. Got a piece of it. West with the steal. And it's Hill penetrating. And he uses the glass on the layup. And now it's just a four-point Bulls lead. Loose defense at such a critical time. You're better off sending him to the line than giving him two points. Time called here. The Bulls decide to talk it over. But well, he looks like he wants to toy around with some of their sets and matchups here. You know, I don't think you can afford to go through a whole game doing the same thing over and over. And you have to be able to adjust on the fly, just like he's doing here. Chicago making some changes. Joakim Noah is checked in for Gasol. Jimmy Butler comes in for McDermott, and it's Rose in for Tony Snell. Now here's Rose. Heinrich a screen on West. From the corner, they grab their own miss. Easy call there. No question about that one. You could hear the impact from where I am. And he makes the first. Noah hits them both. Pacers trail by six. And it's Hill penetrating. And it's Hibbert missing. The Bulls have gone five of six in the field to start the fourth quarter on a roll. Three-pointer, Heinrich. Pacers with the rebound. Hibbert's got three rebounds so far in the game. Outside Hill. He dishes it to George. Fires the three. It's rebounded by Noah. Noah's got his sixth rebound on the night. Stucky against Rose to the right side. Heinrich dishes the Rose. And there's the call by the official. They'll back the basket here following the goaltending call. He got there late, but you do have to like the aggressiveness to go after the block. But that one's going to count. Time goal here. Indiana decides to talk it over. They're losing by eight. 124 left to play here in the fourth. A minute 20 left in the fourth quarter of this one. On the wing, George. Defended by Butler. And fouled hard that time. He'll get to the line and shoot two. Well, some really terrific numbers for Roy Hip. He has eight points and four steals. Now let's take a moment to get your guys' take on the scoring so far for the Bulls. Well, the great passing we saw in the first half has carried right over into the second. Something else you'd like to see is how well they've shot their free throws tonight. He's able to hit the second one, and that narrows the gap to seven. He needed to cash in on all of those. Missed opportunities at the line are the last thing they need right now. Rose against Hill, and it's Rose penetrating. And it's Rodney Stuckey with the foul. That is his first foul of the game. Full 24-second shot clock. 58 seconds left to play here in the fourth. And here's Rose. Over Hill, Derek Rose again. Well, that's a wrap, fellas. There's no way you come back in this one. Not anymore. Any chance of that happening went out the window a while ago. Now here's Hibbert. Good. The assist goes to Hill. He could have forced a tough inside shot, but made a terrific kick out to find the open jumper instead. Chicago's gone one or two from three-point range here in the fourth. And it's Rose penetrating, and he gets it to go. Rose has got the lead back up to nine now for the Bulls. Boy, they're extending their lead. It kind of feels like they're just piling on here as we come to an end. Well, hey, let's just call it what it is. They are trying to run it up on them. So Indiana ends up with a new group on the floor. Watson with it. He's covered by Rose. Five seconds separating the shot and game blocks. And there's the whistle on the shot. Took the foul. Shot misses. He'll be shooting two. You know, even from here, you could see that one pretty clearly. Yep, pretty obvious. And a good call by the official. He drops the first one, and that brings them within eight. Scola hits them both. The 
Bulls have gone 8 of 11 from the field in the final period. Great shooting down the stretch. And there's the eight-second call as they can't get it across half court in time. Here is Watson. Launches it. Some solid defense from Butler. Now Rose. And so it's Chicago winning this one. Both teams played well, but these guys have the edge. Yeah, I think so. They were just steak knife sharp. Very on top of their game here. Well said. And now we'll send it down to Doris Burke, who's standing by courtside. Pal, this win was punctuated by some quality defensive plays. How important is the defensive execution to your success? Well, defense got to be always our, our motor. Uh, if uh, we get some stops, we're doing a good job defensively. Everything will be okay from that point on. So we just got to continue to emphasize our defense. Thank you so much. Back to you guys at the table. Thank you, Doris, for that. And now for Clark Kellogg, Steve Kerr, and Doris Burke. This is Kevin Harlan saying see you next time as we present our Jordan player of the game, Derek Rose.